grass. I was raised in the city. Can't beat it. I'm more used to feeling cobblestones underfoot than grass and fallen leaves. Before I went to Avernus, I'd have agreed with you. Nothing quite like Baldur's Gate, is there? Nothing in my recollection, anyway. Not to my taste, certainly. The whole village is falling to pieces. These goblins aren't exactly house proud as occupiers go. Wouldn't blame the gobs. Place looks like it's been abandoned a good while. But hey, maybe we can scare up a few dusty bottles of wine somewheres. I like your way of thinking. Split any takings we find? Sister, you've got a deal. Trap, be cautious.
weapon blueprints. They call for Sousa bark. There's only one place I'm finding a Sousa tree. The Underdark. Wonder what's past this. Let's get on with it. Let's pop you open, shall we? All's well that ends not as bad as it <laughs> could have. What's hiding here? No time to dally. What's the story? Thank you. 
infernal metal. That's what my engine's made of. Hang on to that. to do. I'm ready.
to fly. Stop this thing! <laughs> Flap those wings some more, and I'll feed you a worm. And you. Hope you got a stomach for rights. What's it bloody look like? We're teaching this here pipsqueak to fly. Cause it makes me laugh. <laughs> you want this little cave lurking what's it? Find your own. He's ours! As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Should have taken a wide path around us. Kill her! I wonder if this is worth the cost.
give up. I'm a mercy, please. I know things. If you let me live, I'll make it worth your while. I uh, promise. All right. Just don't hurt me. Me loose! Oh, bag of Kabara. There's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas. Take my pack, if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I have reason to believe he's in the Underdark. Hopefully I'll pick up his trail from there. I always help my friends. On that note... <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Hmm. Shadowheart's attention is fixed on a damaged old statue. We... we should keep moving. Nothing. The trick of the light. I'll 
take you as I find you. Now let the matter rest. Let's just move along. Time's a rare currency for both of us. burn yourself. Let's move. My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that, love, was that. <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormier, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Charmed, I'm sure, in more ways than one. We should have a chat, you and I, but not here. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come.
There. Middle of somewhere. I don't like this at all. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest, and the famished come to feed, lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Oh, fuck. A cambion. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary. Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. A mere trifle. How dear is one's soul, really? A rhetorical question, of course, but let me venture an answer. It's worth very little with a tadpole in your head. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. Everything is for sale, and you do well to sell while your stock has value. In desperate times, the price of honor plummets. Perhaps you haven't yet realized how desperate these times are. You will. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. That's what separates us from the devil, soldier. They think our greatest strength is a weakness. Hmm. 
I've always wondered what a laughing mind flare sounds like. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. That might be worth Something a look. Something bit me. Just an insect. I'm sure you'll survive. Besides, it probably figured you for a tasty treat. Give me an abalef over a midge any day. Fat. Oh, I didn't want to. I figured I'd give to the draft. Yeah, I keep 
the absolute happy. <laughs> then he turns. Must have, must have read my mind, you know. Missing children. Maggie Terrence, Marcus Terrence, Mathen Deach, Rochelle Kirk. Chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the absolute. Absolute, or any god. I follow two masters only. Gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold. And the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss goblin give gold. We check brand. Good deal. No. Talk. We follow the sense of blood and gold to all lands fertile, friend. And this land proves particularly fruitful. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. 
make me an offer. Tempt me. Though we are, are we not? Take my bone horn. One blow, and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises, and never a moment before. Oka kill everyone around, then Oka eats them. Well spoken, indeed. Ogre, kill everyone around. We will keep close. When you are ready, sound the horn. Curious. She's coming. Well, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mazora, and at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. Will burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes. 
passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. better what the hells have you done a promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even i can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade Karlak, keep an eye on him would you I'll be keeping mine on you. Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. I'll be honest, soldier, I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. It's been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. You can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. All these years... You'd think it's a lesson I'd have well learned. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast Eldritch Blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call Hell Beasts and summon festering clouds, but I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the Pact. I can tell you most all else, but the Pact... I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this. The moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. dog wags his tail, a small bag clenched between his teeth. He gives in and surrenders his find to you. Scratch's tongue lolls out happily his tail wagging even faster.
condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it much like a musician or a poet such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries the goddess mistra she revealed herself to me and she became my teacher in time she became my muse and later even my lover enjoyed each other's company body mind and soul but even so I desired more you see no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become we never scratch more than the surface of the weave Mistra keeps us in check there are boundaries she doesn't let us cross yet every time I was with her I stood on the precipice gazing into the wonders that lay beyond I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms, until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try. And the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. 
I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see it through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread moon. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse. Actually, I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now. Even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Thought I sensed an inferno around here. But you aren't from Elturel. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elturel. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. 
I got lucky. It looks like you did too. And... You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized demono valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Very risky. I might be able to help. But I'd need infernal iron. And a prayer that my hammer will survive the work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Ernest. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. I'd worry about surviving the night first. But help one, help both. If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. Hey, soldier. I think we picked up some of that infernal iron already. What say you? Should I give it to him? Please, let this work. Mmm. The weight of it. And that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect me that kind That feels... good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less... changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now. But I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Find me again in Baldur's Gate. If I'm worth my salt, I'll have figured something out by then. Take care, Karlak. And hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. Pocket any infernal iron you find along the way, hmm? Damn druids. How we use these wooden tools? Oh, isn't too bad. Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down, but it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. Bring it on. Goblins will come. You say that, are you looking forward to it? I could use the target practice. Shoes. Where are my boots? Goblins didn't kill me, too. I miss my forge. Don't say that. I'm just sad. Bored. Um, right. Is that everything? I think that's everything. 
Take me. What I wouldn't do for better tools. Eh? I wonder when the goblins will come. You say that, are you looking forward to it? I could use the target practice. What to bring? And the goblins didn't kill me, too. You say that? I'm just sad and bored. Right. I've got food and water. My dagger. My forge. I wonder when the goblins will come. You say that, aren't you looking forward to it? I could use the target practice. Where did I put that old bucket? Shoes. Well, where are my boots? Hells take me. What I wouldn't do for better tools. Shame the goblins didn't kill me, too. Don't say that. I'm just sad and bored. everything I think that's everything damn druids who uses wooden tools when the goblins will come. You say that, aren't you looking forward to it? I could 
could use the target practice. my forge. Where's that little devil in the bucket? Huh? Hope the goblins aren't smart enough to poison your blade. Shame the goblins didn't kill me, too. Don't say that. I'm just... Sad. Before. Hells take me. What I wouldn't do for better tools. Right. I've got food. Water. Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. <laughs> 